Alright, what's up rascals? Here we're finally creating a new updated version of the tutorial video for my Unity plugin, Rascal Skin Mesh Collider. Here we're looking at an example scene with Unity Chan in it. We're gonna add some cool skinned mesh collision here. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look here. And there's already the component here, but obviously, you know, you can just uh, search the component up in the thing and add that. And pretty much as simple as that. And we're going to generate the colliders on the start, and we're going to just do it immediately because, you know, it's a demo, whatever. And we'll just hit go and just see what that does. And here we're, we're already, we got the collision. And you can see very fine detail collision on every darn polygon here and if we come back out we can see the colliders themselves you can see the green wireframe indicating the signature unity mesh collider and uh i'm not sure what more there is to say about that but we can come in here and do this which is just a demo showing the individual colliders each different uh, color here is a different collider when these are all separated by bone so the idea is that every bone gets its own mesh collider so that even though uh, the colliders won't match exactly to the underlying mesh as it animates because it's per bone you'll get pretty close and if you do need you know more detail to fill in these gaps or something say like you know there's deformation here that's left a gap you can just update and immediately uh, fix that kind of stuff or you could have it uh, just asynchronously updating the entire time to try and keep those gaps at a minimum and uh, that's pretty much about it for that uh, it's pretty simple not much to talk about a few things to mention are that uh, you can't uh, generate, there's no, there's no longer a generate button here. If you were looking at the older version that had the generate button, I had to remove that because it turns out the way Unity bakes skinned meshes is not consistent across different computers or something along those lines. And uh, that would cause problems. But as workaround in the component menu, if you right click here, you can still generate here like this, which will generate the colliders. But uh, I recommend using that this mostly just for debug so you can see in the editor quickly what it'll look like. Uh, but we can just clear that. And the more useful probably is this generate to files thing, which will, uh, if we click this, we can come in here and we'll just make a new folder, you know. Uh, Unity Chan Collision Meshes. And this will allow us to simply save every individual mesh from her, uh, from every collider per bone into a separate folder so that they can be used anywhere at any time and this allows you to store the colliders like in a prefab and such it takes a little while to generate all that because it has to write a bunch of files and unity's like trying to import everything but uh come back here do this and we'll see we've got all these files here can't really see them but they're there uh and each of those is been put into these mesh colliders here and these meshes linked to here and so you could put that in a prefab and instantiate it many times whatever you want the one downside to this of course is just that you uh this is no longer compatible with the updating because that wouldn't really make any sense because you'd have to regenerate it anyway to be able to actually update stuff and like the meshes have to be unique in order to be updated. The whole point of generating them to files is so that it's, you know, one thing per mesh and then you can instantiate it, but then it can't be unique. I don't know. I'm probably not making any sense, but uh, point is uh, you pretty much just want to remove this component afterwards and you just have the mesh colliders here and uh, 
you still get the collision and everything. Uh, this probably won't work because the demo is broken because I removed the component, but you can still see, you know, you've got the colliders and everything and it's mostly fine. And you can use it that way. If you need to bake the colliders in editor and do other weird stuff with them. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and undo that because I don't want that. Uh, the final thing I will show is the, is a common thing that people, um, often want to do here is you can retarget the skeleton as in you can put the colliders on a different skeleton and there's a built-in or included utility component for this so say we want to just just duplicate her uh, skeleton and, uh, so annoying ah uh, unity why I know I'm not the only one who has this problem renaming things because the stupid thing tries to highlight the whole thing, whatever. Um, but if we do this, you know, it's like a separate hierarchy now that apparently has that on it, but I'm going to ignore that <laughs> for now. And then we'll come back here and you want to make sure you get on the same object that has the radical component on there and then we'll just use the retarget skeleton thing and retarget to here and the this option destroy if if no match basically would mean like you don't have to have every single uh thing matching like i could delete the right leg for example and it'll still work and then we would just won't have the collision for that and theoretically i think this uh we should just be able to do this and then uh, that generates, and uh, you'll see that it's on a separate skeleton now. Uh, we have our duplicated skeleton, and it doesn't affect the original one, but it has the colliders on it, and doesn't have that right leg that we deleted. So uh, there you go. You can do that if you need to. Uh, useful for Puppet Master and stuff, I guess. Uh, although, obviously, if you're doing, like, physics-based animation, you'll need to use convex colliders and then, you know, make sure to do that. But that covers the main stuff. I think, you know, they, I could go into, like, all the nitty-gritty with these dumb settings and everything, but it's whatever. Not a big deal. You can look at the documentation if you need more information. All of these have tooltips as well, like, really detailed tooltips just read that if you need to uh, you can play around with the settings who knows but as far as just using it goes uh there done hopefully this is easier to follow than the last one and more up to date and gives you the information you need i don't know